on the Discord right now. I'm muted right and now. I did want something loose as well because one of I the love problems you guys. is that when he's I testing do. out I really suits, do. but he wears like a skin Let's get into the video. Suit, but uh, when he uses his earth. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Craig, I'm the Average Ass Artist, even... Okay, hey guys, I'm Craig, I'm the Average Ass Artist, even though I'm everything but. Today, in between the lines, I'm gonna put down the pen, the bias, and the bullcrap, and, you know, talk about a series or some art I like. This will end horribly, I can just see it now. So today, I'm actually going to be reviewing, as a whole, a series called Black Blaze. Now, many of people have tried this, and... Well, I can't say they failed, but I mean, I think I could do better. Wait, wait, I can't explain. I can't explain. This will end horribly. I can see it. So each criteria will be rated out of 10, and altogether they'll be tied up so you can, you know, get like a pretty good scale on how I personally think, you know, Black Blaze should be rated. Now, I should let you guys know that this review, I'm going to try and do it in a way which is, you know, pretty unbiased and, you know, impartial. But this is my video. So I can say whatever I want, so it is kind of my opinion. I'm not going to be too unfair, but I'm, you know, not going to just slander and roast this thing for no reason. I mean, why on earth would I do something like that? <laughs> oh, I'm cancelled. I'm cancelled. I'm cancelled. Okay, so the review is going to have six criteria: Art quality, anatomy, story, dialogue, characters, and plot. Alright, so we're going to go on to the first criteria, which is story. So... Yeah, I'll see. So beginning with the story, Black Blaze is a series about two species at war with each other. So the main people in the war are the Magnians, these people who have light manipulation powers, orange skin, black hair, mainly with warm colours and live on the planet Magnion, versus, versus the Iceronians, these people who live on ice X with blue skin, white hair, and people who have more ice manipulation powers. The war was started because a clan of Magnians named the Serions, think of them like the Uchiha of the uh, Black Blaze universe, were directly responsible for killing the wife of the King of Isex, aka Carax. After the death of his wife, he became enraged and insane and now deemed all Magnian life unworthy. He then waged war on all Magnians and all those who oppose him. The series is incredibly graphic, whether it's the images or the things that it insinuates, such as war, violence, gambling, discrimination, bad language, drugs, fear, sex, etc. This series is rated over 18, which means that it's not for young minors, since this series can disturb many people reading. However, this does not mean that Black Blaze is just a series of, you know, grotesque imagery that's trying to shock people. No, 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 no. This series actually has a lot of nuance, but it's not going to shy away from the topics that it wants to discuss. So with my honest opinion, the plot may be a little simple and somewhat bare bones. The execution of the story sets it far apart from other series that I've tried narrative before. So in my opinion, I give the story a solid 6 out of 10. My reason for this is, the story is quite simple and not a lot of deviation was added to the story. However, this does not mean that it's bad. For one, Black Blaze is a series that is still ongoing even as I make this video. And the story is still ever growing. So yes, I do give it a solid 6 out of 10 as of now. The story will eventually evolve into the thing that will break the mold of traditional storytelling and tell something driven by creativity and not just moral life lessons or cringy content or just a psycho I don't know how you say it. that stupid thing where like I wake up in an anime universe that is not original anyway with all that aside let's move on to the next criteria of my review the plot and whew, this is a fun one I quite enjoyed this one now as I've stated before today's video will be an overall review of Black Blaze so that means I'm not going to be going into depth about all the specific episodes otherwise I'd be here for two hours which wouldn't be a bad time but be a long time to render. Over this segment, I'm just going to talk about the overarching plot and some of the subplots that are involved in the story. I will attempt to go in a chronological order just so I don't, you know, waste anyone's time or confuse anybody, but at the same time, a lot of things in Black Blades be happening in the same time, so so if you're disoriented at any time, I recommend you to go out and read Black Blades yourself. This review is, you know, a good way for someone to, you know, understand Black Blades without reading it themselves, but I do want you to form your own opinion. So the main plot starts with our main character, Magnus, Prince of Magmion, 
Commander Singe Clacker, one of the uh, commanders in the Magnian military, and the free spirit Flare Serion, considered to be a royal true blood of the Serion bloodline, but she doesn't act like it. The trio are a group, all assembled by Magnus himself, since he sees it would be better for himself and his people if he went out to fort for them himself, instead of being a figurehead of his planet. As seen in chapter 1, Magnus is not the type of person who wants to stand around and have his father and brother idly fight for. He wants to get up and make changes for his own planet, which forces him to act on his own. He also believes that if he doesn't act soon, the war will end in a genocide of the Magnian people. The trio make their way over to Ice X and storm some of the battle moon. This is done as a surprise attack and to dwindle their numbers, to help the main warriors on the front line of the war. However, at the same time, an Iceronian warrior named Soroyak and the newly crowned king of Phyresion named Zenith also seek to end the war, but peacefully. In episode 1, it's seen that Sororiak has turned out to be a traitor for the Iceronian cause, as he believes his king is actually insane, and the path that he is going down will end the Makar galaxy as we know it. It is revealed in episode 3 that Sororiak and Zenith have some history together, which could possibly indicate some other future things for the Iceronians and the Phyresionians. During all of this, Magnus's older brother, Firzan to Klert, Lazvard Vid, two other members, are part of the Phoenix Fighters, the elite fighters of Magmion that are fighting for the front lines. Not much is revealed about Firzan, his relationship with his brother, Magnus's father, the other divisions in the Magnion military, and the mysterious other two Phoenix fighters. However, series regulars like Flair, Magnus and Singe mention their names a lot, really solidifying their significance in the story. During all of this, the forces of King Carax are making their way to Computron to take control of the planet and their everlasting resources and aside from his motivation to kill all the Magnian people, what he's planning to do once he has conquered Computron. As I am now discussing the forces of Ice X, the main significant characters on their side is King Carax, Shiva, Celsia and General Glacier. General Glacier, Shiva and Celsia will all be leading an attack on Computron. Now many of you who may have actually read Black Base are probably wondering why I haven't mentioned any of these smaller stuff such as Magnus fighting Commander Singe in their first encounter, Glacier's feats with the Computronians and some of the littler moments with Shiva and Celsia but none of those are really completely relevant to the story. Like as I just broke it down to you now, did you really find any important details missing about the little moments? No, because it's not relevant to the story overall. It's there's character building moments, which I will get onto in the next topic, but overall as a plot, it's just not necessary to mention. I have also left a lot of things out since Black Base has found its new home on the 9th off, which I recommend you all go and read. Since finding their new home, all the episodes of Black Base are being released weekly, so I cannot talk about all the things that are up to date. The general public won't be able to access these new episodes of Black Base since they're not all updated on the site. And as I'm recording this right now, I 100% believe that Black Blaze is going to update so you guys can get more pieces to the puzzle. So with all of that said, I personally would give the plot of Black Blaze a 7 out of 10. My reasoning for this is that on first glance, the story would look somewhat basic because, you know, people are trying to end the war, the bad guys don't want it to end, they're conquering planets, blah, blah, blah. But the different factions in the Black Blaze storyline make it unique and engaging. Plot different factions all symbolize a different viewpoint on the perspective of war. Magnus and his team have the more naive approach as they desire to end the war completely on their own without any help. The forces of Isaacs have a more conquerous attitude and the viewpoint as they want to conquer the entire Makar galaxy, plunder any planet that they need to. Fiery Seonians represent indifference as they are not entirely involved in the war, therefore they don't care what happens to both sides. And the Computronians represent the casualties and the people who have died because of the war, regardless of them being involved or not. This kind of nuance in the plot makes me want to reward it a 7 out of 10. So, as of now, the score Black Blaze has attained is somewhat moderate since I've given the story a 6 out of 10 and the plot a 7 out of 10, which aren't bad scales by any means. But now the next criteria covers the topic that Black Blaze, in my opinion, excels at, is the characters. The series Black Blaze has a lot of characters. In fact, just saying a lot of characters is by far an understatement of how many characters play an important role in the series and how many characters are just fodder and serve purpose of death. But aside from that, a lot of the characters that actually have an important meaning in the series are either beloved by fans or the fans can at least see their unique role in the story of Black Blaze. When I was talking about the plot in the previous segment, Segment, I pretty much already went into the different characters and their motivations and such. Well, mainly just Magnus and Carax, but even so, the characters in this series are extremely well thought out. Now, for this segment, I'm only going to be talking about important characters that have been fleshed out within the series. Otherwise, I'd be talking about Lazvard Vid, Magnus's father, Firazan, his girlfriend, Carax, Nazir Serion, Volcana. Oh. Oh, too soon? Too, too soon. Too soon, bro.
All right, so beginning with the main characters of Team Magmion, we have Prince Magnus, who is the hot-headed, naive team leader who will do anything it takes to win any fight and get what he wants, like speaking ill of the dead, starting a galaxy-wide revolution, having a Serion on his team, etc. We have Commander Singe, a serious, grizzled, experienced veteran in war, who despite me describing him in this kind of way, is not an absolute brute, and is someone who can actually have an intellectual conversation with. So in episode 2 when Magnus calls him a toothless soldier, you can tell he takes offense to this. And for Celion, one of the only femme fatales of Black Blaze, as of now, is a seemingly careless, heartless, vicious, and morally questionable character who has killed for way, way less. Jeez. Now talking about the characters on the icy side, <laughs> icy. That is not funny, bro. You are not original. Okay, okay, damn. We have Celsius Froze, a vice admiral in the Iceronian military, who after losing his family, decided to pledge full allegiance to King Karavax and the Iceronian people, claiming the Magnians to be, <clears throat> and I quote, Magnian scum. Sorry, it's just really popular to call people Magnian scums. Vice Admiral Shivar Cooley, who is one of the king's most trusted advisors because his late sister was married to King Karavax making technically him and Karawak's brothers-in-law. Shifra is a cold, calculated, yet a very thought-provoking person who, in my opinion, generally has one of the best quotes in Black Blaze. And finally, King Karawak himself. Now, since I already spoke about him in one of the previous segments, I won't go too much into detail, but he's a much more cold, calculated, and vindictive person, yet in his own twisted sense, a very caring person. As he believes this entire war started with the Magnian people is a way of making sure no one is ever hurt by Magnian hands ever again. Like his fallen wife. Her name is still not revealed, I apologize. Now, yes, I know. I haven't spoken about General Glacier. Yes, I know. I haven't spoken about... I'm getting sick of saying this. Firozan Lazvard, his flippin' dad, maybe his flippin' mom. But again, they haven't been fleshed out more prominent in the story. And just as of now, they don't matter. They will, but they don't matter right now. Now, if this is the only information I was going to give about the characters, then they'd probably get a hmm, 7 out of 10. However, due to the community's overall reception of the characters, I'm going to bump it up to a 9 out of 10. And I have valid reasonings for this. My reasoning for this is that Black Blaze characters are iconic and people actually genuinely care about what happened to them. Like back in episode 3 when Magnus talks trash about Sinja's uncle and things like that, there was legitimate uproar in the community due to people saying, Magnus shouldn't be talking bad about the dead. Oh, this guy is a douchebag. I don't like Magnus. And you could take that as a complaint, yes. But the fact that people actually went out of their way to care about what Magnus said and realize that what he said is wrong. Settle down, son. No, I have no intention of settling down. Legitimately makes the character importance a 9 out of 10. Like, there are lots of series out there, especially series that are funded by studios, that people don't care about what characters do. I'm honestly serious. Like, Hawk in Seven Daily Sins. Who cares? I know I don't. But the fact that people actually feel strongly about what happens in Black Blaze and what the characters do, what they say, how they react, and everything about them, Makes you want to give it a 9 out of 10 just for the audience responding and talking about what they liked. Like in the series, we see the introduction of Flair, and this may be inappropriate, but so many people were saying things about Flair. I swear, the amount of times I heard the word hentai and porn and busty and flipping ass cheeks, and I swear to God, I you, you degenerate sometimes. I, mm -mm, I worry about you guys, I really do. I, I, you guys are in my prayers and I'm not even religious. And aside from all the pervy antics, people in the community genuinely like Flair due to her tenacity, her attitude. <sighs> I'm not, I'm not talking about it. The series Black Blaze has actually treated their female characters with so much respect because they don't go out of their way to do anything horrible with them. They don't make them a crutch for the main character. They're not sex objects or anything like that. They're genuine characters who have genuine needs, genuine motivations, a genuine backstory, and are all around decent character. Now, since the story of Black Blaze is a very dark one and there are lots of character deaths fated to happen, all kinds of fans alike experience the distaste and disliking of certain characters being killed because they genuinely have a respect for them. Hello, my name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. The fact that the story has gotten to a point where people would genuinely be upset if a character goes is a great achievement that should never be understated. So that is my honest reasoning for giving it a 9 out of 10 for characters. Okay, hey guys, I see you're enjoying the video. Hopefully. But I just want to take a quick break from the review to say, um, if you guys have made it this far in the video, you guys should like, 
comment, subscribe, you know, all the basic YouTuber things. Okay, peace. So, the next segment I'd like to talk about in the review is dialogue. Now, dialogue is simply the words spoken by each character and how they sound, how it's articulated, and how they, you know, just genuinely say words. For example, the character Groot from Guardians of the Galaxy has, well, I don't know the species, but they say their names as a way of communicating, like... I am Groot. I am Groot! They just say I am Groot over and over. However, characters like... The mobster from Samurai Jack has a very gangsters from the 19, maybe 50s or 60s type of voice. So you gotta pass a little test first, see? Yeah. You know, to prove you got the stomach for it. It's not a hard job, but your heart's gotta be in the right place, see? Like he has a cigarette in his mouth constantly and he's always trying to... But yeah, aside from that cringy introduction to dialogue, the dialogue in Blackface is more regal, which to uh, stupid people means more royal and upper class and like you know, divine type of speaking. It includes words like sire, majesty, thy, works that are more inclined with the contemporary arts of Shakespeare. So since a lot of people speak with this kind of dialect in Black Blaze, I honestly would give it a eight out of 10. Wow, eight out of 10? This that is, is garbage. trash, bro. Wow, no, yes, man. Sorry, this is not good dialogue. Sorry, this is not good dialogue. This is robotic. This is garbage. Those are a lot of the misconceptions that people have about the Black Blaze dialogue. But I want to quickly diffuse those by saying the characters in Black Blaze are either all regal in the royal characters or soldiers who follow kings, queens, sires, and other stuff. <laughs> Having them speak with a more regal and, you know, upper class tone just makes more sense for the characters. Because logistically, it wouldn't make sense for all these characters to say the N word every five seconds to say, hey, yo, what's going on, bro? Or quoting gang signs or anything like that. They would speak with a more proper tone, but at the same time, the series of Black Blaze doesn't go overboard and have them say things like Doth thy bigotries concern thy not or anything like that. They keep it to a point to where the characters sound regal but not forced down your throat to make them sound upper class and just, you know, unrelatable. So in my honest opinion, I would genuinely give dialogue an 8 out of 10 just because Jay, the creator, has gone out of his way to realistically create characters who would speak with a certain dialect. Because if you've, you know, ever seen any lives of Jay Sinners, videos, YouTube channels, you would notice that Jay doesn't speak like this. He doesn't say thy and madam or anything like that. He, you know, he doesn't speak like that. Yo, yo, what's going on, everybody? It's the boy, Jay Sinner. And I was dead ass not expecting what uh, we're here to talk about today, which is uh, the OC part two video. Uh, and I said I would do that if I got, you know, 100 views either on YouTube or Instagram. So the fact that, you know, he could put his own dialect aside and create characters who are generally different from him makes you want to reward the dialogue an 8 out of 10. Okay, so now we're in the part of the review where I talked about dialogue, plot, story, and characters. We've got two more criteria left, but the review's going pretty well so far. I genuinely think uh, Black Blaze has got an honest, decent review of this. I forgot what the score is. I'm stupid. I apologize. But yeah, um, that's really good. Man, if you will shut your ass up! What? What you mean? What? But you always got something positive to say. I just want to say, this is man, how I kind of view the community sometimes. Trash. Trash. I certain trash. people. I don't really need to say your name garbage. because y'all have done the work what? for me. Bro, I don't even know whether I should be reading this paragraph or the bottom one. Bro, this is garbage. Nah, bro, keep talking, keep talking sweet. I'm gonna beat your ass. What's up? Also, Kasoya Zeus is garbage. Sorry. Bro, only people in this community doing good is New Pen. Red F, Red F, he on your asses, bro. He on all your asses, bro. Uh, JR is kind of trash, though. I mean, his art is cool. We really don't know nothing about his story. Th that guy is trash. But I do want to say, where's your story at? I mean, I haven't really written my story yet, but. Man, it's gonna be better than y'all, man. My, my story, my, 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 uh, my, nah, cause real talk, you always got something to say. You were either saying someone else's story is garbage, someone else's story art is trash. But what do you do? All you do is do fan art and fan fiction. And what? S sucking the dick off of these other creators. What have you actually got, aside from lives hating on people? My character, he's a galaxy buster, bro. And, uh, he has sex with fat girls. Do I sound familiar? What's good?
Hey, yo. And should I tell you the best part? Is that this applies to anybody. I'm not just talking about... I don't need to say this. Yeeks. I'm not, I'm not talking about yeeks. Just yeeks. Do you know how many people have come for me? Jay, the other Jay, a new pen. I'm serious. If we're the art community, why the hell are we fighting each other? Why? It annoys me. I, s I swear, y'all got nothing nice to say. I swear, if you have nothing nice to say, don't say anything. Why is this difficult? I swear. Damn. Okay, aside from your friends in real life, the, the, your internet friends don't really know how annoyed you are in this community. Like, I've never really seen you act this way. Like, ever. Like, it's kind of weird, actually. You're kind of usually the nice British TikTok cheerio guy in the community, but this is kind of disappointing to watch. Okay, I kind of apologize for how somewhat angry and, you know, how much I came for people in the uh, previous skit. I don't mean any, you know, ill will to any people. I'm just really upset at the state of the community. Like, I'm generally not a fan of people tearing down each other because in this art community, we're all meant to be friends here. We've all been made fun of, bullied, tore down to other people who just don't understand the art. But to see another artist tear somebody else down, especially for no good reason, because it never is for a good reason, it upsets me. Okay, that's a lot. It angers me. It pisses me off. But anyway, um, I actually would like to talk about some of the critiques I have with the dialogue. Just because the way it's actually said and the way it's written all makes sense to me. But I personally don't like the way it's formulated as in the way it's showed within the panels. And it's funny to me because as I'm recording this line, um, Jay Sinner has recently done a live stream that he put up on his page, which I recommend you all go and read where he publicly reads Black Blaze, and he himself mixes up the uh, paneling, paging, and like how you're meant to read these speech bubbles and things, just because it's not very well laid out, and I don't think Jay in the early pages knew about, well, how to guide the reader's eye. Like, for example, Black Blaze is a story that follows the conventional comic book format of going from left to right, which means that all paneling and things... I apologize, my sister. I'm going to go and kill her one second. Alright, now I'm going to be real with you. I can't be asked to re-record that, especially since it's the second time. So, just know that my sister has been murdered. Nah, I didn't deal with her. She's killed. I, um, I murdered her, bruh. Finished. Vanquished. Man, call me Flair because I took that girl out. Anyway, since the story goes from left to right, it would make more sense to have dialogue appear on the top right to bottom left. So, you know, your eye can follow it a lot easier. However, in the story Black Blaze, Jay makes a comment about it himself. I'll let it play. Sire, we've just lost contact with our fire scouting brigade in southeastern Qua- Oh wait, fuck, that's not how I made Shivar sound. Damn, bro, I'm fucking up already. And then I was supposed to read this first, so... Anyways, but I don't know how long the beauty of my homeworld will last. Sire. So, accidentally putting the uh, dialogue in the top right makes your eye want to read it. Because it's the first, you know, part of dialogue you'd see after the previous uh, panel. So, honestly, I think uh, Jay and, you know, the story of Black Blaze should learn to improve where they put the uh, panels and things. This is frequently seen within Black Blaze, and it doesn't detract from the story. It doesn't, you know, ruin the submersion, but it is just a little annoying. And sometimes you're like, oh, I have to read it from this side. Well, that's a little weird. Why wouldn't you just put it here? Not to be disrespectful or anything, but I think they could improve on that. Regardless, this does not detract from my score. It's just something I would like to point out. Alright, so the next segment I'd like to dive into is anatomy. Now, many people have tried to talk about the anatomy of Black Blaze, but were not cordial or respectful, or even correct, in my opinion. You're not a top hero in the Marvel Universe, and I can, I'm pretty sure I can ask anybody, they won't know who Moon Knight is. You got me fucked up. I, I, you want to call people? What you want to do? You trying to say I shit, or what? And so, I want to try and tackle this in a bit more of a different way. So, I'm going to talk about what I like about the anatomy first. And then the things, not that I don't like, but just the things that should be improved and changed. So if we get a picture of just an average character in Black Blaze, we'll use... <sighs> we'll use Celsius Froze, because he's my favourite character. As we can tell, in the series Black Blaze, the uh, artist, the J, has a very good understanding of the upper body of the anatomy. Because we see the pector... Okay, we, see we have the chest that look well, the uh, biceps... The triceps that are, you know, are rendered decently. I will talk about the things that I would change with his triceps, but for now, they still look good. Um, he draws the abs pretty well. Again, there are some things that I have a problem with those, so I'll talk about that in a minute, but 
as of now it looks pretty good to me and he understands the trapezius and the neck muscles which I think is pretty good and the bottom half of the anatomy is where I have my biggest problem because the quads or the quadriceps or just the main part of the leg is completely wrong because the quadriceps have four muscles there it has okay I'm not going to explain the muscle you have the quads which have you know the three muscles they look like teardrops and then the back leg have the hamstrings which is why they're called quads because it's all four but the way Dre draws them he draws them with two muscles right next to each other but then he draws the hamstring completely perfect so yeah that that makes no sense to me because you know what? How? How does that make sense? No, what? No, 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 no. The story of Black Blaze has been influenced by different stories such as Bleach, Dragon Ball, Yu Yu Hakusho, Naruto, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, Marvel Comics, DC Comics and Image Comics, etc. But the way he renders the legs are more influenced by Dragon Ball media. Which is not a bad thing, I repeat, it is not a bad thing, it's just not completely accurate. Now, I know before I was talking about the lower part of the anatomy, and I wasn't, you know, speaking about it in the best light, but I still believe the art and anatomy of Blackbeard is still quite good. I just think there are little things that could be improved, like a little bit more of an understanding of the leg muscles and the size, just because sometimes he'd be drawing arms in a series to be bigger than legs, which is a big no-no anatomically, because... No matter how much you train your arms, they will never be bigger than your legs. Unless you just don't have legs. And even then, though, that doesn't really count. Speaking of arms, the way Jay draws triceps isn't wrong because he has the basic shape down. It's just the insertions. Like, sometimes they, like, they look like a bicep, but then, you know, shorten out towards the end. Or other times, he remembers how to connect the triceps in to the, uh, to the elbow, but doesn't, you know, put in the muscle part. And sometimes, because, you know, the way tricep looks, it actually has one larger head and then one smaller head. Sometimes Jay draws it the same size. But this is something that can be improved, and I won't be too angry about it, because since talking about this, Jay has improved on his anatomy, and this is becoming less of an issue for him. Now, one of the last things I'd like to talk about that I just have a little bit of an issue with is the way he draws abs. <clears throat> because the way he draws abs annoys me a little bit, just because... Sometimes, you know, he has like a very clear understanding of abs, he knows how they move, how they, you know, shape. And other times it just looks like he was lazy, drew a midline of the body and just added like like semicircles to it and called it a day. However, this is more evident with his old art since nowadays he does draw abs a lot, you know, more realistically. But sometimes he can fall into his old habits and draw them like just semicircles, which doesn't make any sense to me. The only time I would allow this is if your character has, you know, stretched their body back. Because if you've ever tried that before, then I can accept your abs looking more like semicircles on each side. Because, well, the muscles would have to, not, not contract, because the muscles would have to elongate in a certain way to, you know, allow the body to move in that direction. But aside from all of that, I would generally give the anatomy of Black Blaze a... Okay, can you stop the damn drum roll? Sorry, I'll, uh... okay. I'd give the anatomy a 5 out of 10. Okay, hey guys, it's Craig again. Um, so we're going to be on the last segment, talking about art quality, because the previous segments have been dialogue, which got an 8 out of 10, characters, which got a 9 out of 10, plot, which got a 7 out of 10, story, which got a 6 out of 10, and anatomy, which I gave it a 5 out of 10. So hopefully Craig is putting the graphics of all that somewhere, I don't know. So, as I said before, the last criteria will be art quality. And I wanted to do this video-wise, just so you can see my face. Because, you know, I'm kind of sick of the whole recording lines. I got a new microphone. And my video will be coming out about that soon-ish. But for art quality, I'd like to speak about it face-to-face, -face, just so, you know, you can kind of see my expression, see how I feel about it. And, you know, I don't want to be giving, like, middle fingers behind the camera so you can only hear my voice, because I'm not a douchebag like that. So, when it comes to art quality, in the early episodes of Black Blaze, I'd say 1 through 4, give or take. The first three episodes have, you know, coloured pages, shaky line art, very shaky line art. And, and by what I mean by that is, 
Jay kind of was very like heavy handed with his line art, very shaky. He would put two lines on one point. Just because like I know with using Procreate, um, you have to like have a, a full shape so you can use the fill bucket tool. Because I've used Procreate before. Very rare. So I understand that, but it just looks really, you know, unprofessional, messy and just underhanded. Um I believe that if you got rid of some of these lines you made every line you put deliberate, it would look, you know, really good. Next three episodes of Black Plays have the same line up problem, still a little bit shaky. Sometimes he puts too much lines or things and makes it look a little like convoluted and you know it makes it look very difficult for someone to watch. Like in the first page of Black Blaze. Like in the first episode of Black Blaze, you see Magnus wearing his royal clothing, which just looks very like whoa, there's a lot of, you know, folds and wrinkles on that just because he put a lot of lines and you know the emphasis it gave. In the most recent episodes of Black Blaze, his liner is a lot more cleaner and smooth. I still believe it needs some improvement, obviously. I'm not going to say he's without improvement. But I do genuinely believe that it went from being very shaky, very, like, slap-dab, just sprayed all over the place, to very deliberate and very, very clean-looking. Like, in the old episodes of Black Blaze, you can see Jay has gone in and touched some of the lines up. And you can definitely tell which is the redraw and which is, well, the, the old art. I really hope you're doing some editing, Craig, because if you're just letting me talk, I'm going to look really bad. Like, really bad. I do believe, though, a big part of Black Blaze suffers is because of the background. Sorry, lack thereof, because when it comes to conversations, Jay just likes to use a lot of, like, colored backgrounds, you know, behind his characters. And sometimes it works really well, like when Magnus and Fir well, no, Magnus and Fiozon, Magnus and Singe were all having disagreements because Magnus is a very hot-headed person. You know, the uh, backgrounds with the colours and splashes really complemented how people felt about each other and things like that, which worked really well. However, it does get to a point where it's a little, like, you couldn't be asked to do a background that's lazy and I can clearly tell you're doing it. But at the same time, any criticism I give of Jay and any other artist can also be applied to myself because I'm not very good at backgrounds and when it comes to Kasonia Zeus, I also put like coloured thingies but I do it purposely because for one, not everything needs a background for two, sometimes it's just, you know, a good break of colour so you can, you know, differentiate what's going on and see, the colours work very well like, very well so, yes, I do also believe that Jay should be using more softer tones and gradients because it's good that he's now starting to shade all of his pages. Like, can we give him a, hand, a round of applause, please? Because he has gone a long time without shading it. And now he's gone back into doing it, so. A bit louder, come on. Thank you. Seriously, Jay, I'm happy that you're putting effort into your pages again. But I do also believe that he should uh, put more gradients. And what I mean by that is, when Jay used to shade, he used to have... A layer of just soft shading and cell shading as well so i do believe you should go back to that but still have the cell shading be you know more prominent but the soft shading should be more like of an indication of the light source like look at me right now the cell shading could be like my eyes my neck the wrinkles of my shirt but the soft shading could be like the outside because there's a window here this could be the soft shading Soft shading could also be like, you know, around here, just to show that it's a lot further back. You know, just to add a little bit more dimension on his characters. I do also believe that he should shade his backgrounds as well, just because it's good, you know, for your characters to have more form and have, you know, proper shape. But if your background doesn't have proper form and shape, then it just kind of looks like they're standing in like a void. And that's just like, you know, a green screen on background. Like for me... This is a real background. Yeah, I printed Castellan Zeus out. His use of special effects are good, but I do think he should differentiate the uh, special effects just because sometimes you can kind of mesh them together as all one. Like me saying this now, if I wasn't a, you know, avid Black Blaze reader, because I've read the series over a hundred times, um, when Shiva uses his mental abilities right here to, you know, destroy and thoughterize a lot of the Computronian uh, soldiers, it kind of just looks like an overlay glow. Not like, you know, I think. A glow that goes over the entire character. 
instead of it, you know, showing his mental abilities. So, I do believe that you can probably, you know, differentiate the colors and powers between each person, make them really look unique. And he has done this with Flair because hers is more of a reddy orange type color to show her powers because she's very. Alright, so with everything, the score for Black Blaze is as shows. Dialogue got an 8 out of 10. Characters got a 9 out of 10. Plot got a 7. Story got a 6. And that to me got a 5. Art quality also got 5. Okay, I'll stop doing JoJo poses. But yeah, so all that together it is 40. 40 out of 60. Craig can do the math here, wherever he wants. Maybe I'll cut that, I don't know. So yeah, um, that's the entire review of Black Blaze. Done. I'm, I'm not going to update this because, you know, this is a concrete, you know, review of Black Blaze as of now. Because as Jay has said, Black Blaze isn't even finished. It's nowhere near finished. And, you know, I don't want this to be an entire review of Black Blaze. So if in the future some character gets killed, I don't want you guys to say, well, Craig, your review isn't accurate. Of course not. I can't predict the future. Like, God damn. I'm shut the fuck up, man. And in this time I made the review, three episodes of Black Blaze have come out. Black Blaze is now a Patreon exclusive. He's working on his new series, Gravity 6, with a team. Um, he's on a four-month art hiatus to get better, you know, coloring, shading, all that stuff. So, yeah. I really missed the mark. Or, I predicted everything. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. But yeah, um, I mainly wanted to make this video because I've been saying I'm going to do it for like three years, and now I finally got over it to it. And also because, as I said before, a lot of the critiques for Black Blaze have either been unwarranted and untrue. These are the main two, and just untrue. So I kind of wanted to get my opinion out there, just because I've been holding what I thought about Black Blaze for a long time. Not because it's bad, just because I don't want to repeat myself over and over and over again. So I thought, here's a video. So, yeah. Like I said 20 minutes ago, um, if you'd like to, you know, like, comment, subscribe. And if this is my Instagram audience, then you guys should, you know, like, comment, save, share, and follow. That helps me out. Go read Black Blaze, please. Go read Black Blaze. I've only done like a 30 minute video and I know what I'm talking I want you to form your own opinion. That would be nice. You know, come tell me. Tell me if you think I'm full of crap and tell me if you think I'm a prodigy genius who predicted everything. I mean, I'm a patron, so technically I do know what's gonna happen. But yeah, that's it. That's it. Um, I'm gonna leave. I am never doing a video like this again. If I make a review for you, you're paying me. God damn. I want to work in my comic. Just because it's got sex in it and some blood and crazy power scaling should not deter from that. I put that in there to make it more interesting for stupid, simple, dummy, dookie brain niggas. But I guess I failed in that regard. Now it's all about Gravity 6. Ah!